My name is Errol Rotella, and we're at Nessing Cake Farm in Litchfield, New Hampshire, southern New Hampshire. This is a mixed vegetable farm of uh, 35 to 40 acres of uh, vegetable crops, and it's a certified organic uh, farm, and I've been here 17 years. So the vegetables uh, that I grow here are primarily uh, direct sales to restaurants and uh, specialty food purveyors that sell to uh, restaurants and hotels. A lot of culinary herbs, salad greens, uh, more exotic things uh, relate to uh, Asian crops because most of my workers are, are Southeast Asian. Well, basically cover crops are the foundation of the farm. An organic system, one of the ideas is to feed the soil, that if you take care of your soil then you're going to have healthy plants that are going to come from that. Here where this farm is in southern New Hampshire, I uh, found that the best way for me to add biomass or organic matter into my soil to feed my soil comes from utilizing green manure crops. We don't have access to animal manures in this part of the state. I'm using two different uh, green manure crops and, and uh, they're used a little differently. Uh, start out in the spring, areas that either I have bare soil or it's uh, winter kill crops from the previous year I couldn't get into a fall seeded cover crop, I put in peas and oats. And, and peas and oats is, is quick growing cover crop for the current growing season. And, um, and then uh, starting in August and September, as I take pieces out of production and vegetables that were seeded that year, then I'll uh, seed fields to uh, uh, winter rye and hairy vetch. As soon as I can get on the ground, I'll seed a few peas and oats, spin it on, and then lightly harrow it in. And one of the things that I really like about it is that it also brings in early income, uh, my earliest income in the spring, because uh, the young pea shoots are very popular with the uh, restaurant trade and also with uh, Southeast Asian or, or, or Asian chefs. And usually within about four to six weeks of seeding, I have something I can start to harvest. That's a really good starter for the springtime. The pea tendrils or pea shoots, pea tips, different names for it. It's not something you can sell tons and tons per acre. I have tons of it. In fact, that's one of the reasons I'm growing it for is the biomass of the nitrogen that the peas are fixing that. So that's, but um, on a normal year, I probably can realize gross sales between uh, say eight and ten thousand dollars on uh, five to seven acres that might be seeded to fuel peas and oats. So what we have here is a strip that I started, uh, it was a strip of uh, hairy vetch and rye. I started turning it over probably uh, mid-April and everything was broken down enough that I was able to transplant my uh, tomato plants probably about the third week in May. And um, meanwhile, the rye and vetch on the beds next to it were continuing to, uh, to grow. Just about at this stage, is the point where you want to knock it down. What I'm looking for is for the vetch to start to go to flower or the, the rye to be at pollen stage. And what I like to do ideally is to cultivate it once with my tractor and then I'll knock it down with, with the mower. And then once it's down, we'll use the straw as a mulch for the uh, tomato plants and then we'll bring in some, uh, some stakes and do a basket weed system to bring uh, you know, a trellising for the tomatoes up out of the mulch. I'm utilizing the uh, straw from the strips to start with the mulching process, but I try to have a block of, of uh, rye and vetch nearby, as you can see behind here, and I'll mow that down. As I start to uh, mulch these, I'll have a good, uh, a good close by area where I can bring in more mulch without taking a lot of labor moving mulch from one area to another area of the farm. Well, I look at the cover crops as, as biomass. I mean, two things that are very important for the farm is nitrogen from the fixing of nitrogen and the legume, that's part of the green manure, and biomass is very important. So I want to maximize my biomass, which is bring it to full maturity. Strip system with, with hairy vetch and rye, overwintered, and then cutting strips in the, in the springtime, I use it for wide space crops. 
or crops that I choose to grow in a white spacing that may not traditionally be grown in white spacing, but uh, pumpkins and winter squash, easy to plant in 10 foot centers, that works very well. And so I can have five foot wide beds with uh, the adjacent five foot wide strip of the hairy vetch and rye. Tomatoes, I have wide spacing so I can get a good airflow for, uh, for disease. What we're doing here with green manure cover crops is I'm using them to uh, confuse Colorado potato beetles. I cut strips, plant the potatoes, I try to do my uh, weed cultivation and hilling so that the potato plants are, are well established and then at that stage I knock down the rye and vetch and usually by then it's late June, early July and that's the first the potato beetles even come into the field. They don't need to have a big mulch on the ground like I would put on the tomatoes. I just want to have some contact with the straw on the potato plants. With this method, uh, I've never had to spray more than twice and, uh, for potato beetles. And, and, and at best, it's a spot spraying. I don't spray the whole field because good portions of the field, there won't be any potato beetles at all. It's usually on an edge of where they'll come into the end of the rows or an edge of where a field of solanaceous crops were the preceding year and they'll find a few a few rows. This is my spader, which is the uh, primary tillage tool on the farm. I use it for incorporating pretty much all of my cover crops. It uh, needs to operate at slow speed, and so that's, you know, one disadvantage is that when you're bringing that organic matter in the soil and that, I can't move very fast because it's a lot of biomass is chopping in there. But once it's in the ground and I've made a couple of passes, then I can go in with a field cultivator and do a very rapid pass, make a nice smooth seed bed, and then I'm ready to go. It's like a number of shovels and it just cuts clods. It does a good job of, of chopping the straw into the soil but you get nice clods in that and, and then over time that they can break down slowly so it's much gentler on your soil structure and it doesn't oxidize all that organic matter you're trying to bring into the soil. When I first came here there was a rototiller so that's what I learned on for primary tillage but uh, I really didn't like what I did to the soil. I really beat the soil up like an egg beater and I, and I heard about uh, spaders being much better for soil structure and better at incorporating biomass and not oxidizing it. So this seemed to be a much better implement for improving my soil quality. And that's really you know, important for me is, is uh, doing the best I can for my soil.